what? Let's fix this. My apologies. Um, it is a good Friday. I had the whole speech all lined up. Uh, a good Friday, a good outcome. And this one was a massive one. Had lots of smiles. I muted that one in the race to try to get the graphics done. Um, <clears throat> just to get over here because I am ecstatic. And I don't know how you feel about this one uh, and the outcome. But it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And necessary. Um, already been identified that um, everybody really, other than Mansfield and crew, uh, did the job. They did the job, and so it was necessary for us to do the job too. So we're certainly into the hunt, vinyl horror, identifying it's a great Friday. I've got uh, somebody lit, already waiting in the weeds. Vince is sitting there, so I'll bring um, you in, Vince. I don't, uh, if, if you're the Vince that is the Vince, then I'll bring you in there. New graphics through you guys for a loop. I get it. This should be shared about. I know that I was told that... Uh, uh, I think it's Rousey from Two Beards is probably going to join us. Uh, I'm expecting Josh from the local pundit and probably Sheldon to join us. I haven't heard from, uh, Daz said he'll join us eventually. They're they're covered in wet and coming back from the rain. So I'm sure that they're looking forward to getting back and there Sheldon is joining on cue. Um, I'm going to grab Vince while we're here and we wait for the, the regulars to join us. And Sheldon, uh, I'll grab you right after that as I see you're getting set up. Vince, I assume that you're going to be just audio only, but uh, let's test it. How are you, Vince? I don't have you muted. So maybe you joined the wrong link by, by mistake. And that's okay if you did, because I sent the links out. I'm going to grab the link while we're setting everything up. If you guys want to join us, the whole reason we sent this up is to do like a sports radio call-in show in the, you guys call, you got, in the UK. It's called a 606. This is the link. You can find it. It's a Friday. There's no legal work to do. Today is a day of celebration. Today was actually about a lot of nerves, and I don't think I fell asleep until 3 o'clock in the morning or 3.30 in the morning soaking this one up. Today was a day of nerves. Um, but the outcome, look, the the, the first 30 minutes, will. Uh, I don't want, want to cheat and give all of my, my stuff away. Um, as Hugh, nice to see you drawing in here. The very first, well, I've got the score backwards. Mansfield, I'm going to have to get rid of my design caption. Sheldon, I'm going to bring you in because you can rescue me while we do stuff. Oh, he's not there. Let's uh, change my design around so that you guys can't see the score while I go and fix what's happening and talk to you guys. And we'll know. Uh, let's talk about the game and my, th my thoughts. Rough yellow card early from McLean has you nervous because, uh, and you actually saw him in a little, a couple minutes later, pull out of a potential challenge over in the far left corner. And so I was like, is this going to be something that bites us? You've got two equal teams. At the end of the day, here's the story. One shot on target. I'm pretty confident that that came in the first half. No real threat other than the opportunity uh, in the 30th minute. No, that's our goal. Sorry. On the miss by McCullough, that was at the 26th minute. Kluwerth got the block in. And that was the one where um, it bounced around and then came to McCullough and he had that right footer that went over far to the right. And so other than that, what other chances did they really have? The, 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 the announcer was fascinated by one of the attempts that, that came in. Um, one of the attempts that came in from Gail, one of the substitutes, and said that he really um threatened with the shot uh i didn't think that he did I, I i don't know what you guys thought that was terrifying ruby still having a heart attack you listen to mark Gr griffiths uh, and that was probably uh to be fair the right idea i was listening to to the zone so that they're neutral broadcaster so that i could get the um the the faster updates and so promotion is there. Did you watch ESPN? So I watched on DAZN. It probably was the same feed. I'm going to grab Sheldon. I see Ellis is sitting there waiting. Vince, I think that was a mistake. Sheldon, I want to... Um, your friend Pat was on Local Pundit tonight. Might jump in with you. So excellent. I'm all four people joining us. Get them all in here. And Sheldon, I see... Uh, let's hope your mic's working. Uh, yeah, should be. I'm on my phone today. Excellent. So uh, I'm going to give you a second while I go and ch change my graphics. Why don't you give your summary... And I'm going to go fix. I've got the score backwards in the corner, and that's a rookie mistake. So go through what you saw today and what you liked, what you didn't, and uh, and we'll we'll get into it. Well, today's the type of positive play that we should be expecting in every match, including against all the lower teams, um, that for some reason we don't often see. Um, so that was great. Um, the goal was fantastic. The goal that was disallowed against Mansfield was an Oconco mistake it should have stood. The ball was not taken out of his hands. It was a slip. We got very, very lucky there. And then the penalty was not a penalty either. That was just outside the box when he was taken down. 
and it was a bit harsh to give us a penalty for that one. It should have been a free kick. But swings and roundabouts, this happens throughout the season. There is going to be a lot of complaints from Mansfield about those refereeing decisions, the same as we would if it went our way. But we played well enough to win that match. So I don't feel as bad for them um, as maybe I would in a different situation. Um, but overall, a very, very positive match. That's 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 roughly how I thought. I I, I did want to add to that. The only thing that, and, and we'll probably go through this as we go through this. I thought Nigel Clough let his team down. How so? The substitutions as to the the mass and the and of them. First off, Keeler Dunn is your best player and your best offensive threat, and you're losing in a game and you take him off and you bring in Boateng who did nothing. But more important than that, he made such large swaths of changes. I think it was five subs within five different players who came on within the span of about six, seven minutes. Yeah. I'll double check that to make sure I have it right. And it just took the legs out of the team. And, 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 and one of the players that they left on was Aikens and moved him to the back. And I said this during our watch party, I haven't seen a player in league two or in the national league as poor as his performance was today. Um, It was, he was, I was glad when he was on the pitch and we, and we, we kept coming down the left side to come after him because he just couldn't, he couldn't cope. He couldn't deal with it. And every touch that he had was a giveaway. So um, that was my take on it. I see that there's some people sitting there. Ellis is staring at the screen and, and looking up and I see him lifting his face up. Oh, I haven't met Ellis. I don't know if that's Pat or if it's elsewhere uh, and, and where he's sourced from. No. If he's from, we'll, we'll find out. Ellis, how are you? Oh, no, we've got you muted too. Hold on. Hold on. Hit that mute button. I've got you unmuted on my end, so this is just a standard little hiccup that we get there. I'll give you a second to do it. If not, it, it, it seems to happen every once in a while. But I am so happy and stoked that we got somebody to sign up. Yeah, no, still don't have you there. I'll give you a moment. Don't leave. Come back in, but I'll just remove you from the chat. We'll get the, get you going in here, and I see that Sheldon's had to run away and deal with something. We are expecting more people. Look, the chat is down there. Um to be able to join just like, um, and I don't know, to be fair, I've gone through it and it has a mic option and a, a camera option. When you come in, you can turn off the camera. If I know who you are, leave the camera on, uh, but it allow you, it has the mic open, make sure that's unchecked. And then the other thing is just test your microphone before you come in, but by all means come in there. Is it an indication of cloth's arrogance? You know, it was fascinating to watch that because I've always been a fan of Nigel Clough and I think he is an exceptional manager. He had a horrible day today and I think he knew it. There was that that panning camera shot to him in the 70th minute at some point and he looked despondent. He looked just shattered, knackered um, and at a loss. And maybe that was dis- despondent because of the referee stuff that Sheldon identified and I'll bring him back. I see he's there. Um when you're ready, Sheldon, just give a thumbs up. I see you're getting adjusted. Um, he looked despondent. I don't know. Did you see that look on the on the on the view that you had of Nigel Clough in the 70th minute? And did you have thoughts as to how you thought he performed? Um, yeah, I can. I I don't mind doing the multiple substitutions. Sometimes you have to do it and risk um, everything going flat. It, it happens, yeah. and you might have to do that. The subs that he changed. Now, fair enough. That that could be more legitimate. Um, as to making the wrong substitutions. But it wasn't long into the second half on our stream that I mentioned that the players themselves looked despondent on the Mansfield team. They did not look happy. Now, I don't know, was it the change that was made in formation at half time, or just the fact that they were behind to us? So they weren't stepping up to the plate at that point. And I was taking that to be quite positive. And then a bit later, yes, Clough it started to look very much down and there was comments in our stream as well from lots of people saying that he looked like uh, i won't say what but they said he would look like he was about to go away and do some not nice things to himself I, I, um, it was shocking to me uh, you know fair yeah. enough mansfield hasn't lost a lot of games and i don't think that they've been just out of it um like they were in this one blame the referee for a couple of bad calls but i don't one shot on on target for the game and none in yes. the second half yeah and yeah. and you have to ask is is that us? Max Kluwerth had a beast of a game, um, in in the back. Our, but I don't know if that was us as much as it was them. Yeah, I know the score is wrong, um, Michael. I appreciate that. I'm trying to update it, but I'm having issues on my end doing it. Um, so let I, 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 th- let me... I think it was a little bit of both. Um, we played very well in defense. Um, 
They had a great game. They chased everything down. There was very little that was uh, accidental mistakes and passes through the defense today. Um, but I do think Mansfield maybe uh, played the possession game a bit more. Like at certain stages, we were saying, keep the ball, keep the ball and stop kicking it up. But at some points, they were playing around the back and holding possession and ultimately doing nothing with it. And what we did do is we in intercepted a lot of passes. And if not intercepted them, we chased them down and were on them the second they got that pass, which we haven't seen lately in a lot of matches either. Yeah, I've, I've got uh, people logging in here. And so I'm, I, I appreciate that, yeah. Sheldon. Stay with me. I'm, I'm going to keep yeah. you here and I fixed the, gra the graphics. So let, let's get it, uh, get it in. And here's Ellis. Hey, what's Ellis, up, guys? You got a mic. You know? hey. hey, thanks nice. for joining us, Ellis. Exactly what we set this hey. up for was to have fans from come from all over and let us know yes. their thoughts. And so uh, the question I always send to when we get people is let us know uh, who you are. Uh, where you are, how you became a Wrexham fan, and uh, your thoughts on the game or questions if you have them. Nice. Okay. So I started watching Wrexham a couple years ago with the documentary when it came out. I really love sport documentaries. I think it's really fun to connect with the team and how it is since we don't have too much football here where I live in Canada. I live in Ontario. And um, yeah, it's so much fun to watch a games. I was so, it was really hard to connect to a team. And I wanted to connect to um, a team in England. So it was really cool to get connected or in Wales, I guess. So um, it's just Even better to right? as a yeah. Canadian supporting a Welsh, Canada, US, Welsh, uh, uh, Wales, um, England, sort of uh, similar as far as size and out stature. It's familiar for us, I feel. Yeah, we um, got the same, same feel, eh? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh -huh. So um, t as far as watching the game and all that sort of stuff, are you on DAZN? Do you do iFollow? Um... Um, I, this time I got iFollow because it's the big match. It was really exciting. It was so fun to watch. Uh, I guess like the middle game or in the midfield, they could have got like a bit more like connectivity and stuff like that, like a uh, bet better passing. But overall, it was just a, such a fun game to watch. Those They were attacking so well. And it's really nice to see – Mullen and Palmer together, and then we also get to see our guys from the bench come up. So it was great. To, it was fun to see. Yeah, hundred percent. It was. It yeah. was. It was. It was a beautiful thing to watch. Um, did you have any questions or any comments? What was your takeaway from the match? What ended up being what you thought uh, got us to our two nothing lead? And we yeah, I think that momentum is like a huge deal. And now, once we got this momentum going forward into the rest of the season, it's going to be amazing. Because I was thinking about this all week. I was like, this has to be the game where it's like make it or break it if we want a chance for the cup. So I'm really excited. I'm a pretty casual fan, but I'm it's all the hype. It's really Lamp good. Enough. You got the bug now, man. <laughs> it doesn't go away. Hey, um, I, I'm for this is the first time it's happened in the channel. I've got like three people in queue. And so Ellis, I don't want to cut you off because I think this is awesome being have able to have a chat. Um, super appreciative of you. Um, nice. For everybody that's wh wherever you're watching, by the way, uh, Sheldon's local pundit. You can watch there. I think they probably have it out on Twitter. Um, I've got it out on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Um, so wherever you're watching, find a link. I'll keep putting it into the chat. Pat, I see you're there. I'm going to grab you next. I'm just going to go check on PA fan um, who's um, got their off. It, because, go because you got some nice new people there. Um, you can throw me in the background. And I can jump on at any stage. Um, okay, or perfect. Thanks, Sheldon. I'll go just, ahead and do that. And yeah, thanks, else, so. I mentioned that I jumped off. And, nice. and Vince. I got to go. So you can cut me too. Nice. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you, Ellis. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, oh, Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Pat. Uh, I'm replacing hey, you. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. How are you doing, Dan? I'm feeling excellent. You go through a good Friday and you watch uh, a match that you've been waiting for all the way through. I just, uh, Hugh made a comment here about uh, official, the Wrexham official commentary team that Keeler Dunn uh, chance was not a goal. I'd like, to, I think that they yeah. won the official commentary. Um, in our watch party, because Pat, I think you were doing the local pundit with uh, Sheldon today. Correct. I was with, yeah. uh, watching the game with Sheldon and we kind of both agreed like, yeah, it, it, it wasn't, uh, um, the goalie um, who uh, took the ball, uh, oh, we yeah. should have well, a goal. A goal. Yeah, definitely. And um, well, coming back and even forward to, towards the penalty as well, uh, questionable, very questionable. Uh, lucky that you had the uh, penalty needed, yes, 
uh, break the game completely. Um, so we're very uh, fortunate with the, with the 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 decisions of the of the of the referee. Was it entirely the game won by the decision of the referee? Definitely Agreed. not. Uh, I definitely not. If that if that's going to be the take on the, from the opponent, that's definitely not. What I so far, what I and pretty much Sheldon uh, highlighted already, how I uh, look at the game. Finally, Wrexham, in my opinion, had a plan, had a plan, and they executed it. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I saw. Pat, I didn't, I didn't ask the the original question that I always ask everybody is, uh, where are you from? What brought you to Wrexham? And and how do you? I mean, it, you were the local pundit actually doing the social content, but how do you normally end up soaking in as much Wrexham as you can? Uh, first of all, Wrexham is if uh, we not noticeable a uh, Wrexham somehow, somewhere, somewhere, what? Then then you're not on the planet, or you don't at least you don't have like Netflix. So of course you know uh, uh, Wrexham. Uh, I kind of more stuck to into it to to Sheldon. I have to admit, um, my background is uh, coming from from the Netherlands, um, moving living here in Helsinki. Um, meet up with uh, Sheldon somewhere, and then you can't you can't deny to be so sucked up into the Wrexham and the and the, and the flow that and the positivity. I mean, the Wrexham fans are global. I mean, global. And it is uh, it's very nice to, to watch and, and to see and to you know to, to to experience their ups and downs and that's basically it. And now we are clearing it up uh, and, and, and hopefully we keep that momentum. I, I'm I'm with you and I do agree with you. We were split on our watch party as far as the Ogonko. There was about fifty percent. I was part of the fifty percent that thought that Ogonko had that dropped and bobbled. Yeah. Either done took it and yeah. put it home. Um, I, I I get nervy. That's one of the only deficiencies that Ogonko has is he doesn't collect mm. confidently loose balls around the, the, the area. Um, and and his communication, okay, maybe it's three. His communication, I think, needs to be a little bit better and improved, and we've been talking about that for a while. And he always has one missed kick that goes out of play, although he didn't uh, have that today. Um, uh, the one thing that he, he doesn't time waste, there was that 83rd, 84th minute or whatever, and we had the ball, and I don't know if you guys noticed it, and he ends up collecting it. It's a goal kick. You know, you've got time to take 30 seconds, set it down, do your thing, and all that sort of stuff. And he throws it quickly out to Kluwerth on the right side, and yeah. I was like, they're on the attack. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's happening. He, he's, he's a big fellow, and you expect, like, he's control, control within the 16, that his, his spots, he can take everything. And sometimes I was like, yeah, are oh, you know a big fellow or a pussy cat? And, and and that's exactly what you're having. And, and sometimes you make amazing saves you're like, okay, now I know why you're standing there for. But yeah. yeah, it is it is it's almost like all or nothing with him. I'm I'm excited to go to Twitter and look at uh, the discussions about that Agonko one and the and the penalty non penalty. I mean it was clearly a foul, the question only being whether it was inside the penalty area. Um, I thought that the initial contact, what uh, live, I thought it was clearly in. Um, but when you watch the penalties to where the contact went, I went, yeah, I think we got away with one. But I'm with you. I don't think it impacted uh, how things happen, no. right? Yeah, what, what, on the other hand, you can look at from that angle as well. It could be that he, uh, he was the last, uh, he was taking the last man. So as, as defender, so he could be having a red card as well. Of, so he didn't. So he could be having a penalty or, or, or be sent off by a red card. So it, it, it could go both ways. Um, I believe, again, coming back, what I always said, it was outside. But again, we take it. It's okay. But it didn't affect the referee's decision on the game. The tactics well, I, and the energy. One shot, one shot on target, really two arguable chances. Um, neither of them really threatening. Um, wow. Yes, there was that fumble that they actually found the back of the net on from the Ogonko one. But even with yeah. that, I, I felt like we were, we were in control oh, sure. despite the possession yeah. stuff um, yeah. through throughout. They just, they didn't stir the drink for me. Um, I feel quite confident with that statement. I see that Josh is there. I see Vince is there. Vince, I don't know if you've joined the wrong link and you meant to join uh, to chat or whether you want to chat. There's a private chat on your screen. If you could just send a message there that says, want to chat, I'll bring you in. Um, I brought you in, in the last time and I wasn't certain. I've got, uh, Josh is sitting there, so I want to bring him in. You know Josh, because obviously you guys have been doing your thing at the local pundit, is we're waiting on 
uh, Baz and Matt to potentially join us, as well as if Rousey's still up in Australia. Josh, was- holy crap, man. How good's your Friday? <laughs> That's a good Friday, man. It's a really good Friday. Sorry I'm on my phone, but uh, oh, it's really good. Oh, how are you doing? How is, how is, do you have a voice left? How are you doing? Oh, I, I do. um but it was strained uh at times i look i had i got commented about having the biggest smile i've ever had watching the game um and so it i it was a lot of fun today and and i don't know tell me your thoughts i've i've talked a bunch i'm trying to get through the chat we have 214 already here i'm not going to be able to keep up with the chat hey thanks i'll I'll, i appreciate you doing your thing pat and uh pat's over the local pundit with their watch maybe you can talk about it um if if you don't know when you're new to the feed josh local pundit uh past 500 subscribers filling out some tax information and getting this thing all set up yeah, I need to call you. By the way, you and I need to talk yeah, about. Yeah, do it. It's a pain in the it's a pain in the rump. Um, yeah. And so does some great work over there. I wish I had the time uh, to be able to join and do some things with. It's just uh, nature of the beast. But um, red horse, do your thing, man. Tell us yeah. what some that some that one up in a nutshell because I've been rambling on for too long about how, and how happy I am. Like I'm boom, I'm beaming over here. So was, yeah, I tell was, us what your thoughts were. I was being. I got about five minutes, and I got to jump in the car. But I wanted to just come on and just uh, give our take and say hi to you and everyone and everyone in the chat. It's awesome. All the all the other shows, man. Um, uh, so, anyway, so uh, what a game uh, that, that was uh, for me. The performance of the year. Uh, I thought it was solid. Uh, everyone was up for it. Uh, uh, Ivan on the show uh, yesterday's show. We did a show. He's like, we got to go in and get punched in the mouth and get bloody. And within two minutes, now granted, my heart was in my throat because I'm like, don't send him off. Don't send him off. Mecca. And, you know, get yeah, some yeah, blood yeah. in there. Yeah. And I was like, great. But uh, it was the performance we needed. It's granted, we had the performance we needed and we're still in third. But uh, I think everything's in our hands. And I have I have no complaints. You know, I, I think we, I, I really have no complaints. I, I was happy with everything. I think everyone really played well. Um, and Mullen on 99, you know, and I, you know, I, I try to think of like what the rest of the reaction would be 99 problem, problems, but Mullen ain't one, something like that. We're thinking about it uh, for that, for the rest of the reaction. But, um, if I wasn't, if I, I think everyone played well. I, um, the only thing I thought was a little dodgy, uh, was the uh, AO at the back with the little taken out. I think he'd be a little stronger. Um, and then the penalty, I missed it. I had to take a work call. So the lads were watching uh, for us. Uh, shout out to Ivan, Sheldon, and Pat as well. Um, yeah. So I missed it. Uh, but after watching it on the replay, uh, Red Kidney Glasses says that was outside of the box. And I don't give a shit. I don't care. Um, but. We, we would care if it went the other way. So I always try to put it as like, if that was, if, if you swap the jerseys around, what am I doing on this on this instance, right? The Abramco sure. one, I think, was closer. Yeah. I got a weird feedback on that one. I and and I think we were split on whether he had control, whether it was Nick. In in a game like this, do you allow for those chintzy goals? I don't know. I think you lean towards making the call to benefit the defensive side, right? Um, sure. And that's going to happen. But but the penalty one, when it happened live, to be fair, I was like, that's a. I was screaming penalty like right. as, okay. as soon as that happened, and I thought that it was in the area live, mm-hmm. uh, and as it turned out, it wasn't. Um, and so it is what it is. Um, I don't think it affected the outcome. It did, didn't. By the way, I you know I thought this, and they're a good side. They got a good man. They got a great manager, um, great support. I was on with the Mansfield Matters podcast guys this week, Clive and Craig. They were you know very positive, yep. good, good, good guys. Um, but uh, I you know I thought that they didn't really threaten us. I thought our defense was solid. Uh, by the way, shout out to Kieran uh, Kieran and, and his ba- dodgy knees. Uh, his Newport County loss today, so he's in the chat there. <laughs> Um, but no, I thought I thought it was a full performance. I thought the back line was great. Uh, Ao, uh, you know, probably the only question mark. But Maca playing with like 90, 90 something minutes on a yellow and uh, yeah. And yeah. I, despite Mullen scoring two goals, made Clueworth my man of the match. Good. I was, you know, I, I was going to ask you that. Like Mullen's the obvious one, but but like who else? Like hundred percent Clueworth. Hundred yeah. percent Clueworth from from the. Um, he had two blocks early on. Yeah. Uh, and, and and the one that where and I think it was Lewis who had that shot that went just wide on the right hand side. That of all of the attempts that they had, it was that shot. Or was it Lewis or McLaughlin? Um, anyway, it was, a, it was a block that came bouncing back out to their attacker over on the left, who shot it and just missed in the first half on the right hand side. To me, yep. that was their best opportunity for a goal, mm-hmm. and and that was um, 
that was that was Kluwerth with his second shot. I've got it at the twenty seat. I'm reading. He's, my... he's faster than I thought. By the way, he he went yes. down the ground and had a great tackle. Like he's, I mean, he's young. He's twenty one or whatever it is. In he's... position, he was just there for interceptions, and he was the, the had the first pass up through Cannon that went to Mullen for the first goal. Yeah, that yeah. was Kluwerth again. That's like he's 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 doing it all. Right, you, know, you call it like not that he's the most improved player in the season. Hundred hundred percent, like unquestionably, and yep. just rock solid in 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 the back. Yep. Um, you know, you you look at teams and you go League One. Who do we have and young players to go up? He's the type of guy that you want to sign. I am getting some reverbs and echoes, and it's uh, weird. If, if it's me, it's because I'm on but my phone. I apologize. Uh, and it, and it might be, but I'm I'm going to keep you in there. I keep putting this in because um, I'm. I, I know that a lot of people were tied up with after events because it's Easter, right? Yes. And lots of people are running around to things. I kicked my family out to Science World, and so they're gonna go have some fun and uh, and spend some money. And here's here, here here's the credit card. card, no limit. I got to yeah. jump in the car driving to Palm Springs in about two minutes. The missus is up there packing, but uh, did, much uh, better. You and I have to chat um, yes, about. Who, if we've got four bodies and if we all want to do a match or if how we want to do it, because the plan, if, if, if you're joining whatever stream, the plan is, is that uh, John, I don't think that anybody else can do it. It's really just you and I. I think Monday or, Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. Monday, I Monday. thought of doing a watch party. You can't. Well, well I, I, wanted to, I was hoping to get somebody to watch all four matches. If somebody's going to watch it, maybe I'll talk to our own people. It would be nice or to have a watch party where we had somebody with an eyes on the Stockport match, the Mansfield match, the – Barrel match now. Forget crew. I think they're Forget done. Crew, yeah. And and the dons. And well, you and know what I can do. Over. I can uh, I can give the keys to Sheldon or Ivan if they want to do it with you. And I'm sure we'll, they we'll chat and we'll figure it out. We'll okay. I'll I'll connect with them um, before or after this is all done. Okay. And so other than that, you you said you had limited time. Um, yeah. Your yeah. watch party coming up on Tuesday. You probably have a video in between. Yeah. Um, tell us what you're doing and wrap it up with your final parting shots on what was. An absolutely epic performance. Yeah, I, honestly, I was. I like you said, I was, I, the, the smiles. I was. I was pumped. Yeah, we even got we even got Island, Ivan to be very positive and smiling. He's back. He's he's all in. We parked the parky stuff, and it's like I think that's maybe it. Um, but the, my the best performance of the season for me, and uh, it was proper six pointer, and it's, uh, it's it's so cool to be a part of it, and and everyone on on all the channels, and uh, what you're doing is is awesome too, and, and Red Horde. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just happy, and yeah, we'll I'll, I'll put up a thing tomorrow, and you're not in our Discord, are you? If you want to come in, I'll I'm not. It's, send me a link because I do intend to jo join it. I'm gonna have a weekend where I actually have time. I had like okay. a two week run where I was working 16 hour days. Um, no. I'm, I'm back to being able to do some stuff in time to maybe okay. look at some financials ick yeah. um, and we'll see if I come up with a video for that so okay. by all means do that um, final thoughts on the match before you jump out I just spent uh, the, a good a good Friday and that's what we did a good Friday. Yeah, good I Friday. will take it I see somebody else has jumped in just in perfect time it's Ivan gonna have a chat and he might oh, want to cool. say something before you log out parting shots Ivan and then I'll kick him out <laughs> yeah kick me out <laughs> hey I, on that bombshell you gotta eh, it's over done <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect ivan you were doing the uh, i've got everybody from the the local pundit here today signing up which i think is awesome uh yeah. and so rumor is you're you were happy i see you smiling man <laughs> with the outside of your norm uh um, yeah first first off good to see you buddy uh yeah, yeah we're um we had a good we had a good stream and look i'm so proud of the boys it's um i don't know if you watched our pre-game streams i was saying that it's all going to be about that that fight it's that killer instant going out there ready to you know crash kill and destroy literally and i think the unsung hero of this game is maca because i think his his brutal challenge within the first couple of minutes will really minutes shoot in. the hmm? three minutes in yeah, Smash. that brutal ch challenge really, really shook the uh, the, the Mansfield because he literally showed them like, look, it doesn't matter what happens, we're gonna we're gonna hurt you, we're gonna make you bleed. And I think they were like, okay, so these guys are not kidding. And then for the rest of the game, like uh, this physicality, I think that was the key, is is literally out there, out there hurting them. I'm I'm with you. What did you think of uh, my biggest criticism of Mansfield? Uh, I mean, they they looked despondent. They looked lethargic. They looked like they were out of it. Whether that was beat down by the referee, whether that was this tone was set no. and they weren't ready for the battle. 
Um, they didn't look ready. One shot. That's uh, that's target. what I mean. That's that's the physicality. That is that challenge in minute three. And I think other boys were also giving. It's like you know, like like a game of hockey, right? So if you have the big big check the first couple of minutes of the game, and uh, and the. Yeah, and the forwards of the opposition team is like, okay, we're not going to carry the puck because we're going to get laid the hell out. So yeah, yeah. and I think that's what what happened. They they literally got kicked and punched straight away. Like we we were out there to kill. We were out there to kick asses and take names. And yeah, the game was not the prettiest. There were some technical mistakes. Um, however, the goals the the first goal that was scored was beautiful, beautiful. Um, movement of the ball that's what i was talking about all season long stop playing it high and, uh, and 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 long look for those half spaces nice through ball um yeah so i think um i think that's what shook them. that's why they they looked lost that's and i said that in the beginning of the second half when i was expecting them to go out and just come out swinging and go for it but they looked like they were just contemplating the, themselves they were scared they didn't know what to do and yes the ref the ref definitely made a couple of mistakes from my point of, of view but it didn't matter we got the better of them yeah i'm, I'm a, I, it was coming we were there um i i i don't think they, i was shocked at how top scoring team in the league one shot on target and nothing threatening um and and complete control well i did want to talk about the goal that was and I, I've, you may have heard before i don't know when you joined in i i actually thought the man of the match was max Kluwerth, even though mullen scored two and eeks closer closer to his hundredth he started that play with the pass to, to cannon um and then cannon fortunate on that goal as beautiful as it was in the build-up and as and as nice and it was a threatening ball by cannon i'm not saying that that flat ball on the ground wasn't threatening but if, if I was a Mansfield fan, I am absolutely livid, not at the referee, but at the performance of three players. Brunt, who missed that that, that clearance, and it went to Mullen, and then it nutmegged um, Flint and went through his legs. <laughs> Horrible. I'm absolutely livid at Nigel Clough, because in the 68th minute, he goes and pulls the only guy who was doing anything in Keeler Dunn and yanks him and kills the team, and then... Akins, who is, is the worst football player I've seen on my television screen in my lifetime. Um, and that's, he doesn't look like he belonged on the pitch and he stayed the entire game. So I don't know if you have any of those tidbits. Let me share your thoughts. Uh, well, look, one. you are, uh, you're making really good points. And what I, what I would say is that the reason why they uh, played defensively so poorly when we were scoring the first goal is because, A, they did not ex ex expect us to play that ground ball in such a dangerous area they did not expect us to do it so quickly and they did not expect us to deliver a low cross because 99 out of 100 they were studying us before they were looking at other games we we're always crossing it high always it's the same pattern of square cross it was a different it was a different layout they were getting ready for an aerial cross and it it just it took them by surprise that we didn't do it okay the 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 way the way the way uh, the way the game went with the early sub for sub because the uh, the guy got injured after that tackle that shook them that changed the dynamics of the game the initial plan that they had went out of the window when the coach yeah. is forced to make such an early sub it just it changes it changes everything it changes the flow and that's why a lot of the players uh pretty much found themselves uh playing on the spot wing winging it yeah and I, and I absolutely agree. I don't know if you can see or hear, hear those blips, but I've got um, Baz and Rousey have joined us. I see Baz is doing something with his mic. So I'm going to grab Rousey and pull him in here, who I know is in Australia, and it's late there. And he told me he may have partook in some um, excitement uh, or some calming things, however he wants to call describe them. I didn't set up the mature audience thing. Do I have to for the day, Rousey? <laughs> Oh, geez. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, do it. Be, be you, do you. And and I want to know uh, as late as it is and in the mood that you're in, uh, tell us uh, Rousey's perspective on what was a glorious Good Friday. I I think that was, I mean, I, I said at the start um, in, in our little fan chat that I've got that I'm like, none of the, none, no one's giving up an inch um, for probably a good solid, up until the first goal, no one was giving an inch. It was just um, high pressure on both side, both ends. Um, and then obviously the goal happened and um, yeah, I think they just, there was maybe a five minute period where they probably looked to 
bit threatening to us trying to get it back, but then it just it was it was like they gave up. And I think when you look from the 80th minute onwards, they um they did not look like a team that wanted to be there at all. So um oh it was just magical. It was just fucking so good to see. And you know what? I I put this question to you because we're all talking about it now. We're one point from the top. You reckon we can go back yeah. to back the champions? Do I think we? Yes, with the with the. See, I didn't want to make comments because I was waiting for this Mansfield match to be to decide what was happening, right? Because I I looked at this game as sort of the gateway to either a really nasty nervy run, and assuming we avoid a trap game, the, the opportunity is there for us to secure things and really get the momentum going towards that Stockport or maybe the crew match. Um, I think we're there. Um, I think we've, I, I think we're in the fight. The question is, is on goal differential and, the, and who is Stockport right now? Is Stockport the team that's been, you know, throttling everybody around them or are they the team from three weeks ago that was struggling? Um, because th- I do think that when they have everybody healthy, they're probably, I'll say on par. I don't want to say better than us, but they, they, they've, they've proven their capacity to fill the net all year. I Mansfield has been close, but to me, a lot of that's been defensive and just eking out wins. So Mansfield slip up at the worst time. I think it makes it potentially a two pony race to Stockport. So why not go for the championship? Um, They're talking about um, points. I didn't update my table as far as where we're at with automatic um, promotion and stuff. But I actually think that, you know, even with the win today, I I think that 80, 81 is going to do it. Um, Kim said 80 to 83. Um, but I think that auto promotion is 80 to 81, but I think that the, the target's I, title it has to be title. I bet, right? I bet it will come down to knowing our luck. It'll be Wrexham, Stockport, final game of the season. Whoever wins that will will be the champion. <laughs> so have have that as the battle for the championship with both teams already having been auto-promoted, right? Like that, yeah. that to me, that's the perfect situation is we secure our auto-promotion before we go into that one. And then it's just a wide open knock them out, drag, dra- uh, knuckle fight, dragging fight where we take mm. on Stockholm for the, for the time. Oh, and I, I was listening before I was out the back. I had you on my, on my phone. I was listening in. You were on the back. That, There's comments. I haven't brought any of them up as to what you were doing on the back, <laughs> out, out of the back but uh, I'll bring that one forward. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> so you, but, anyway, you were listening out in the back. What did you hear? <clears throat> yeah. So I, um, I, 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 <laughs> heard there was a bit of talk around the Oconquo situation and whether that was, should have been given as a goal. Um, yeah. I Good had luck. to, um, I think that the right decision was made there a hundred percent because you cannot kick the ball. The rule is you can't kick the ball once the keeper's hands have touched it. If it didn't look like he thump, uh, fumbled it at all. Um, it looked straight like it was, it was quick. It was quick, but it was kicked out of his hands, and you can't do that. That's a disallowed goal any day. So, um, yeah, so that's that's my view on that. <laughs> it it it's, was it's a rule uh, I'm going to have to go and look at as far as like, uh, let's not. This wasn't the situation, but he's got it in his hands. I'm the goalkeeper, and then let's end up saying that I just for no reason something happens my and I just drop the ball at my feet. <laughs> How what's what's the rule as far as being able to go and get it after that after he's collected and if did he have possession and I don't know what the nuances are of that rule but to me he he I think he lost it um, I think he he had it and he lost it and it was free and then it was nicked but mm. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter <laughs> great my ref eyes are, my eyes are glazed <laughs> you've been eating donuts. <laughs> Oh, and if you're yeah, a little bit of a little. I can use uh, a cookies and cream donut about now. Pretty, actually, uh, <laughs> stop giving me the munchies, <laughs> Anastasia Romanov. <laughs> I am moving some stuff um, out of the way. Something happened. Reloading the page um, for the people that join that are not Wrexham fans. Absolutely welcome to join and have a chat and all that sort of stuff. But let's just leave the language alone and uh, and and uh, be a little bit pleasant. 
Um, you don't have to be nice. You can be upset. You can be pissed off. You can hate the referee. Um, you can hate us. Um, but at least have some civility. Bring and so we'll on. leave it at that. Bring um, it on. I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna look at Baz is sitting there holding on for a while. So I want to bring him in. Baz, you're ready to go. How are How you, sir? You got to take that one in. <laughs> hey, Bazzy boy, what's going hey, on? Right. How are we doing, Josie? And is that Ivan in the background? <laughs> yes. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. yeah, I've just seen a message saying that um, it, it, one of the guys was driving uh, cross country or something. So uh, I guess he wasn't going to make it. Um, Josh, was it? I think driving. He's he's just left. He popped on for like no. five minutes oh, early okay. on just to say hi and give him two cents. And he's bounced out. We had Sheldon who's lurking in the background. I'll bring it down. And there's still uh, that's the link for other people to join. We had a couple. We have, have had a couple of guests come in and chat. Um, and so, anyways, you were actually at the game, right? Just about. <laughs> I tell you what, what a, what a marathon session that was. We left Yorkshire at. Uh, about 20 past 10 this morning and hit every sod in traffic jam on the way to Wrexham. We made it there about, oh, I got, um, it, it was literally a Hot Wheels drop where I, I jumped out the car, handed the keys to the wife and said, you, you go and park up somewhere. And um, yeah, we, uh, me and two of the lads got into the ground about, yeah, 45 minutes before kickoff. So I was happy with that. Um, what a game. <laughs> I was nervous. I had it down as a draw. I thought we were going to be looking at a draw. Um, and I was just listening to the BBC Radio Wales commentary team. Um, Kevin Ratcliffe, I haven't got any time for the guy. He's ex-Chester. Although he played for Wales, but he's, he's Chester through and through. He hates Rex, so yeah. he's never got a good word to say about us. And... Um, he was saying, yeah, first 30 minutes, Wrexham didn't get a look in. It was all Mans Mansfield. The referee got both big decisions wrong with, um, was it Bolton getting brought down outside the box, um, which for me, I thought he was in the box. And the other the other call, which Rousey just said, was about the, the Oconquo issue against uh, Keela Dunn, ex Wrexham player. Now, for me, my, my gut instinct wasn't going to disagree with Rousey. I think... I think the ruling is you ha the keeper has to have both hands on the ball. And I think he only had one hand on the ball. So for me, it looked fair game. Um, gutted, obviously, at the time when he netted it, because obviously Mansfield fans piped <laughs> up and, and we all thought he was going to give it. But, you know, particularly as a lot of decisions had been given Mans Mansfield's way at that point. Um, so there were a couple of big decisions which he did make in Wrexham's favour that looked like quite favourable um, and, and I say the penalty one for me that that just put the game to bed um, but um, chatting at half time with some fans saying that um, Mansfield who, who looked you know in, in good control they're a team who I think have got probably the best away record in the league um, they're a team that's mm -hmm. really dominant in possession um, today I, I think Wrexham had a game plan listening to Phil Parkinson just now on the way home um, saying that they've worked really, really hard this week in, in training on, on the out-of-possession play and he was really happy with how, how that went. Some of the stuff in possession maybe could have been a bit better, but, um, hey, it's three points in it, you know what I mean? And we're only you one think, point, where, as where you, said. Where were you in the stadium? Did you have an angle of, uh, of the penalty and did you see that as being in the box or outside of it? No, we're in the Wrexham Lager stand, the opposite end towards the cop end. Uh, I had a very good view of the Oconquo issue, but obviously the second half, um, the, the play was down the opposite end. So, um, yeah, it, it, for me, I'll, I'll take a penalty every day of the week. And, and what no, a hell well, of a shot. I think we all took it, but I, I do think the consensus, I <laughs> think the consensus the is the that, roof of the that, net. that the contact was outside. Hey, um, Grizzly, uh, how is Manfield ranked above us when we had a draw at their place? Beat them at home, have more overall wins and a tight end points. Comes down to goal difference. And you're tight in points, it's all about the goal difference. They've scored more goals than us, had more bigger wins than us. So they are naturally put on top. So it's all it's that your answer for that. They certainly um, didn't have the shooting yeah. boots on today, that's for sure. They they must have had about four <laughs> shots that rocketed into the cop. I, I know Rex had one into the cop as well. Um I think it was was it Paul Mullin? Sky launched it, yeah. I thought O'Connor yeah. was going to take um, it, to be honest. 
I thought so too, but I remember, I mean, go back, what was that, five games, six games ago, and that was that goal that he absolutely ripped, and it was from the same position with that same wall set up, and so I was like, this is scripted. This is scripted for Mullen to take it. He's got to have a go, and and so he did. For me, um, you, you went through a couple things. Mansfield came into this one first and goals for, first and goals against, first and goals for away, second and goals against away, and the top away record. Um, and so, and, and what was fascinating for, for me, and you saw it live, I never felt like the team was under threat after the first 30 minutes, Agreed, 26 yeah. minutes. After that Kluwerth um, block and then the miss by M- M- McLaughlin, whoever, whoever the sub was that came in for, it was, yeah, for um, it Hewitt, they, they, never, they never threatened after that point in my eyes. No, they they they, nah. they 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 looked quite a physical, strong presence first half an hour, and then I don't know. They, they seemed to. I think after the first goal, um, they seemed to step down again as just as Wrexham sort of stepped up. Um, yeah, it was it was uh, yeah beautiful. I think a beauty to watch. <laughs> it looked great. <laughs> got, got a right? put into it. It looked bloody well in there. Already Tuesday game. Atrocious. <laughs> Do you know what though, right? I go back to my little predictions chat, right? Where I was getting mocked that we'd achieve 28, 30 points by the end of the season. This was just before the Forest, Gr- Forest Green Rovers away game. And um, that Mansfield draw that we didn't get, and obviously an extra two points, brings me on par now. So I got 14 against 14 predicted. So obviously a lot of results haven't gone the right way. Um, and and like Rousey was saying, it's just, um, it's just one of them where nobody's getting a real run at the the league title at the minute which is it's it's going to be real interesting with six games remaining and 18 points Wrexham have potentially got 91 points on the board and somebody was saying I think it was Kim earlier that we we only need sort of 83 I think the interesting point as well is if we win against Doncaster Rovers Tuesday that we're secured playoffs for me I don't want the playoffs I want one of them top three I'm being greedy now because uh, I think we've had our we've had our shitty spell and now we're we're going to be um firing going into the the final running did you see that leader article where um parky i think he was saying that um it's uh eight games ago he said this is now an eight game season i think that put it quite poignantly like the, i think the boys are up for it they're playing they're playing like it is now a six game season to go so they're just they're going throwing everything they can at it and you know, I'm. I've got a good feeling. I've got a very good feeling. It's 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 odd. I mean, but I've got to keep calling a fucking loss now, right? Because <laughs> the last the last game I called a loss, and of course we went out and and, and won. And then it's I had to. Everyone was saying that you got to call a loss now. It's superstition. So my my life just got fucking depressing. <laughs> <laughs> an interesting point though right an interesting point was the the guy that went off after about seven minutes i think on four minutes it was it was a 50 was- 50 where mclean went thunder clapping in um on elliot hewitt number four and it was Stephen mclaughlin number three that, that replaced him um whether that was i've seen many a game and i, I always think back to the liverpool everton i think it was 1989 where Steve McMahon, oh no, it was Wimbledon. It was Wimbledon against Liverpool in the FA Cup final at Wembley where Vinnie Jones went in on Steve McMahon and proper let him know that he was in for the game. And, you know, that that midfield battle just sort of won itself there and then in the early exchanges. So I, I don't know a lot about um, Elliot Hewitt, but maybe that was part of the game plan. Oh, okay, it was a little bit disappointing that um, McLean got a yellow card early doors having just come back from a two-game suspension. But, yeah. Hey, um, that that um, speaking of that yellow card, on the TV it looked it like it could have been either way, and I actually thought they were both going to get carded for a moment there. Like, did uh, uh, it was such a weird angle. Um, someone obviously like yourself who was there, was it clear yellow just for McLean, or do you reckon it could have gone both ways? I think I think it was pretty much a fifty fifty, but he went in really really firm and i i was quite anxious that he, it might be a bit more than that but um, again i mean both he, he i think um mclean had to swap his shirt because he must have had some blood on it so um 
but the other guy, um, he, he was on the sidelines for a few minutes. So we were playing against 10 leaving. minutes, uh, 10 men for quite a few minutes before obviously they substituted him. So for me, I think I think it was probably McLean edged it, <laughs> for what I see. He's a brute, isn't he? he glad love he's him. on the team. I fucking love him. I love him. Yeah. He's not, I don't he's not a player that you'd have much thing. love for if he was on the other team, is he? <laughs> Oh, was, oh, I'm trying yeah. to. Sorry, I was. I'm, I'm. I'm trying to do. I. I put together a table to pull all the magic numbers, and one of them wasn't working, so I was all confused here. But I mean, the interesting thing about Crawley Town losing is down to 80 points. Is is I still think we're a ways away from securing a playoff spot. If, but not. I don't know who's playing each other and done all the variables. Um, but I've got crawley town jillingham oh you know what 74 77 walsall's got 77 we would have to win we can clinch but we have to win and take a draw and i know that nobody wants to just talk about the playoff stuff but it's part of the process eliminating teams from being able to catch you is part of the process and that moves us up to over to 10th overall um, what, what did so what did work for us to today season. sean was that um jillingham and crew drew i think it was nil nil so they obviously and, took a couple of points off each other and, and that was the only thing score out of town that ha helped us. But that also makes and identifies how massive this game was. Could you imagine the outcome if this tilted the other way? If this mm. tilted the other way, we're sitting on 70th point, only ahead on goal differential over MK Dons, who reeled us in by scoring five today. Yeah, it's five still 10 goals. behind, but they're there. Barrow still has uh, two games or one game in hand over us. And they've got uh, a max 88 points, which is only three behind us. So they're into it. And and we would have been losing touch with Mansfield, who would have been at 76, and Stockport at 74 with a game in hand. A loss today would have been a nut-throttling, gut-wrenching, painful experience. And they and we don't have to worry about it. I don't care how it happened. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah, to be to be behind four points of Stockport with a game, them having a game in hand, to be quite quite some, it'd be difficult to claw back that. I think um, I haven't looked at Stockport's run in, but who have they got? Um, I I can bring all I can bring everybody's run up except for Barrow here. In McLean, just a oh, yeah, McLean got... set the tone going hard. Yeah, you never want to go in soft. You never. Jens, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I was just about to say I, I need to go, um, but what I wanted to say before I go is first of all thank you very much, uh, and and I hope that we can keep that level of play uh, playing weaker teams now because, you know it's weird that we kind of yeah we never really worry about Rexham playing the better teams because we know we're going to step up but if we can stay consistent playing against the weaker opposition that would be great and I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna see some good results at the end of the season. We need yeah, we need a good sure. twelve thank, points thank in the next four Ivan. games for sure. Reach it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hey, thank you. I'll see you later. Cheers, Ivan. Yeah, Take care, do. brother. Hey, um, Nigel Ivan Clough. Go. There was a there was a shot of Nigel Clough in in on the um on the stream when I was watching it, and he looked so dejected. He he just like he wanted it to be over. He reminds he looks like Teddy Ruxpin. He looks like a really <laughs> cute teddy bear. I just wanted, literally wanted to go up to him, put my arm around his things, mate. It's okay. It'll be over soon. <laughs> you know, he mismanaged that game. Him. I know everybody loves Nigel Clough, and I'm not going to question that he's a more brilliant footballer, fo football manager than I will ever be, even if I was to study till the end of my days. Great manager. He stuffed that game. Um, those subs, I mean, he made the two at the half. Gail and Nichols came in, went up front, and did absolutely nothing and pulled away any. Uh, power that any attempts that they had he took Aikens and moved him to the back who looked completely out of touch and then in the in the 68th minute you're getting to the point where you want to do something of substance and you pull off your best player in a game that you're losing in Keeler Dunn I don't know Baz you tell me you were there I was impressed with Keeler Dunn the entire game as I am all like every time I've watched a Mansfield game was he as good live as he appears otherwise or did you think he was maybe off today and might, maybe that's why Nigel made the change? He had a couple of good spells, to be fair. He got into some good positions. He was obviously their set piece taker to a couple of corners for them. Um, but again, whether whether that, that was part of the decision-making process because they weren't getting much success. Um, the defence, really, you know, we were winning the, the headers, um, you know, the, the aerial battles, winning the headers today was um, really impressive where... We've been a bit 50-50 with some of them. 
um, you know, Will Boyle, you know, a lot of criticism or uncertainty about him first opening 10 games of the season. And then obviously had a big spell without playing. I think he did well today. But I think for me, um, a real good um, threat was um, Will Swan, number 26. Um, there, there was an instance where I think him and Max Cloweth, to a man, Max Cloweth did really well chasing him down, went in for a sliding tackle, put the ball out for a corner. But um, again, if any other day, if he, if he doesn't make a connection with that ball, he's through on goal and probably puts it away. Um, and he had another ish, instance where I think he was one-on-one -on -one with a Conco in the first half. Um, and a Conco dealt really well with it, to be honest. But he 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 looked a bit of a threat for a couple of occasions. But in terms of Keeler Dunn, though, when when he was at Wrexham, um, I think he was offered a contract and he chose not to accept it. Um, obviously, that was before the takeover, so not the best career. And he movies, deserves probably. everything that's coming to him. Yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. He had a few boos as well when he was on the ball by the Wrexham fans. Um, but I think him and Dan Jarvis, they, they were one of them players who, uh, or two of the players that are very inconsistent. They could be really good. And, you know, and he, he scored like 18, I think, last time I looked. So he's, he, you know, he's a goal scorer for them. But that's, I was, I was shocked. You, defense. You, you need a goal and you just took away one of, if not the biggest threat that you have. Um, and then with those five changes in 20 minutes, they just weren't the same team in the second half. Like I know that they're going to be disappointed. We've talked about it already, but they were they were bad in the they second. They gave half. up. They fucking gave up. They just they yeah. had enough. That's what it was. Yeah. So hey, well, Hurst scored first. I Don't mean, it was sl <laughs> sliding all over the sod in place anyway. I, I should say. But... Sorry, I, you you brought up a brilliant point. We scored first, so the Palmer magic is still in place. Yeah. Um The the score first and not having lost is still in place. Mm -hmm. And then a stat that I looked up and I, I, I messaged this to Rousey and I probably should actually bring it up and, and, and chat about it, but I didn't talk about it and I didn't post about it. This was the 11th game that we have played um, with this referee um, since going back to 2019, 2020. And we have never lost a game when he's uh, in charge. Yeah. That's a real good stat. That is a real 11. Good stat. 11 games. Not all of them were wins. I think it's like five, <laughs> five, six wins and five draws. But we've never lost with this guy. I did see a stat on Twitter. I can't remember who posted it. It might have been Beardy or somebody like that. But um, I think, um, yeah, he's got an average of like, I think I think he's refereed like 11 games where he's, he's got an average of three yellow cards a game or something like that. So he, he did well. He was, he was consistent today at least. Yeah, um, I, 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 put, I put that together for our walk party. But I don't think I post it anywhere. Um, did you guys want to look at this this upcoming scores uh, or up, upcoming games that are coming next yeah, week? Do we want to Don, Doncaster mm -hmm. and Colchester, they're the games, if anything, that they're the ones that are going to worry me more at this stage. I think with, um, you know, we seem to play better against the top teams. But yeah, Doncaster and Colchester, they, they got me worried. Oh, hey, by the way, Sean, you got to put yep. out a new logo. <laughs> Oh. I got a witch. You got to put our new logo on the side. You seen it? <laughs> I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Um, <laughs> so now, yeah, we've got Doncaster, and that one's on the second. Oh, it's it, Forest Green consider continues their assault. I don't have Barrel. This is Forest Green, so maybe they can hang on to this one. Knotts County. We all love Knotts County and the Magpies now, don't we? Um, I think they're officially eliminated from stuff. I'll have to double check and I'll update that information. St Stockport has a battle with Wimbledon um, and Wimbledon's at the 11th hour of their season closing out with them not having a sniff. So they've got to put in a fight. So it'll be interesting to see how that works at Wimbledon. Um, and then Mansfield. From What do we have with Mansfield going forward? Um, like you've, they've lost now. Uh, they what do they got? They had seven points out of their last five after now it's seven points out of their last six. Are they, are they, are they the team that's in jeopardy of falling out of this? Potentially that might have rocked them today, you know, um, 
I, I'm just gonna. But I think they had the easiest run in though, didn't they? So they, they have they have Accrington next week. Then they have Crawley. And then they have FGR. Then they have the Dons, Gillingham, and Barrel. Yeah, I think they. Mind you, Gillingham may not be playing for anything. Then maybe a playoff spot. We'll see. But those are all thumper. Like the end of the the, the run's not good. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody else has a thought too and wants to join, who loves Snots County? Not me. <laughs> How don't, I have I I kind of felt sorry for Knott's County when they lost their, their coach. Um, you know, Luke Williams is a great coach and did great things for them. And I think that I truly believe their season will be very different had he had stayed. But uh to see what's happened to them, I guess, you know, it's a bit hard hard, but because things that came up together, but Hey, that's football. Maybe that'll be Stockport next season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, I do want to – I've got uh, Sheldon sitting in the background, and I just wanted to make sure – I'm happy to bring you in, man. I'm not ignoring you, and so if you want to come in, you, then let's do it. Let's. Uh, I, I asked that question, <laughs> what do you think is Mansfield falling out of it? If they hit a draw in the next two matches, um, that could worry them, yeah. Every, every, I, I have listened to some Manfield podcasts, and and they are really worried about a massive crash. <laughs> it's fascinating to me. I mean, the, to their benefit, they have three home matches in a row, which is yeah. odd. But it's anyway. They've got Crawley, Forest Green, uh, Accrington, Crawley, Forest Green, all at home, and then they've still got one more with Gillingham. They've. I'm with you. The next three games, if they don't pull it out. That's the team to watch that ends up falling off of this thing potentially. And who thought we would have been saying that three weeks ago as they were looking like they had this thing free and clear, which maybe is a message to us not to get so high on a big win because we eat a mm. loss against Donnie on. Nothing two, wrong two. getting high. Nothing wrong with that at all. Not to get too high in our boot. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we eat a loss away on Tuesday, we're right back to – the sky is falling chicken little and is that, it's just running nuts. <laughs> oh dear. So well, um, what else do we want to talk about gents? Nobody else is pulling, pulling out here. Impressive stats. Ruby, is that from the, what, uh, the ref? What about the, uh, the financial results? Um, I'm doing a whole video on that. Oh, I, 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 be careful, I, got numpty, I got called a numpty <laughs> by by Rousey publicly because I, I said we were being misled. I might have been a little bit too assertive with where things are at, and I've got to go back and check all of the numbers. Um, I did find it, a couple of things interesting that I want to look at, and I haven't heard why as to why they did a, 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 a restructure of their parent ownership groups. And I imagine that's just because they added Hugh, uh, Humphrey and and Harvey to the mix, but that they seemed, didn't do it just Yeah, that seemed to be the consensus, didn't it? The 5%. Yeah, they, but they actually created a new holding company. Like, so there's actually two new, two parent companies. Well, there's probably four parent companies uh, through the network of companies that are now operating the club. Um, not, that's not a bad thing. That's just how it operates. Um, and I think it was necessary because of the shareholding situation with the equity payouts uh, and, and who holds the re welcome to wreck some stuff. I want to go through that. There were some amazing signs. Let's look at it financially. Um, the turnover jumps from 2.6 to 5 point something to 10.4, basically doubling each year. Um, if that continues and Fleur's statement was correct that it's to 20 million, that's like doubling every year. That's not going to continue in perpetuity. Yeah, it, 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 to me, every individual thing said, you know, can be misconstrued, but I think it does all pretty much line in together because it, it's a lot of marketing speak and you have to be careful with reading it correctly, because one of the things they did say was that um, they don't expect losses again because they're now viable. Well, technically that's true, but there isn't a hope in hell that they're going to go into ne next season and be, they might barely scrape being viable because they need to buy half a new team that they're not talking about in And the 22 acre academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's all okay. speak, but the point is probably true. Yes, they're viable. If they stop buying, if we just moved up to League One next year and bought a couple of players, we would stay in League One. We wouldn't spend a lot of money. We'd earn our 20 million and the company would be viable without a loss before worrying about paying back the directors. 
and the owners um, their loans. So yes, technically it's true. But we know next season at the end of the year, they're going to turn around and post a loss that's going to be maybe 2 million, 3 million, whatever. It's probably going to be a little bit less again. But they will have spent a ton of money on a new team next year. Not, yeah, to, not to mention a one million payoff for Parky, yeah, just to be controversial. Hey, <laughs> hey. Contract, there you go. Hey. I saw that one in there. See, see what the chat that'll set the room on fire. Well, I mean, I think uh, you got to look at projections a little bit different than um, actual actual stat. But it's like I, I, I think I've had a, was having a chat with someone before and just said, you know it was made quite clear on the documentary that you're going to lose money being in the national league, no matter what you do, we had to spend that money to get out of the national league. So naturally it was going to feel like a big hit, but the fact that we doubled, doubled again, chances mm. are we could be projected to double that again, which would put, give us that 20 million turnover. But, you know, projections are just that they're, they're what, the club i guess is hoping for what they're what they see is happening is is you know what they want to put put forward to the public is that we're projected to do a 20 million turnover but you know the all those numbers were from in the national league so you're going to no, have they weren't. Shitty figures. yeah I, th I think the 20 million figure will probably take into account the tsc the u.s tour the 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 yeah, United mm, that's, that's deal, everything like that will be in that the next is, exactly. I that's where the, the 20 million popped up because Fleur just knew too much. Uh, was coming in advance, yeah. she she knew what the United contracts were, she knew what they were earning from the welcome to Wrexham, she knew exactly how much they were getting from a stadium welcome full Wrexham, every single match, and and she knew what it's coming at. Yeah, welcome to Rex is not included in that. That's not owned by the club. That's owned by R and R. No, but there are pays. But yeah, yes, I know that. But it. yes, but my point is the payments made by Welcome to Wrexham to the club on behalf of using um, the club and the players and everything else. They do make a payment to the club for it. It's not. Yeah, free. I mean, I think it, it's it's an interesting one to put out, and there seems to be quite a bit of a uh, two sided um, two sides to this, or, or who people are that, but. You know, I'm on the side that, you know, you, you shouldn't just be puckering your asshole right now. You, it's This was expected and the club's yeah. doing great. And there's no there's no indication that the club's in, in, going into a bad time. So there's nothing no. to worry about. The club will make money. And that's just how how it goes when you climb up the leagues. And maybe we'll be there's, in League One for one season and, and go up again. You just don't know. Rousey, you're bang on, and there's two things to consider is not just the financial records as they stand by themselves, but what the m money was spent on. And I'm going to go through it on the video that a large portion of it was on capital expense, and it was for long-term assets, it was for fixed assets. And so that's cop stuff and stadium things and buying equipment and all those sorts of things, and that's value to club. So you end up saying, okay, you've spent a big chunk of money, but a lot of that's going to capital infrastructure and stuff that's going to stay with the club. What's the value of the club now? They've gone from two and a half up to $9 million. They've added $7 million. They've made a profit despite having put that money into the capital invest investments. I, I was probably a little bit too rough on Fleur with my <laughs> first tweet that went out and used the word misled. But I will say, if the ball was dropped anywhere through this process, I think that they should have come out and made the comment and said, we were at 10 million. It doesn't have to be in the financial statements. You're not going to put that perspective stuff there, but in their press release to have said, we still uh, are confident that we've had 20 million and those numbers will show up in the following and year. It's just to eliminate the voice, but we are talking about Bush, it. So maybe that was Be quiet. It's not meant to redeem yourself, dude. I'm meant to give you a number. <laughs> hey, never mind 9 million. I, you can, I you can give me the number. Yeah, I'll eat it. We need new hand dryers and then bloody toilets. Five minutes. I, I missed out on drinking time. I had to go straight into the game because uh, just spent five minutes under the hand dryers. We need new hand dryers. They can't be that expensive. You've got plenty of money. Get some in. <laughs> now, okay. I'm, I'm going to ask a question here. Right. Are you being perfectly serious that you need hand dryers? Right. In the race course. And there's a reason I'm asking you that. Well, okay, especially right. Especially when you got a 15 minute queue for a beer okay. at half time, you know, right. you, you haven't got time the to reason... go to the toilet and have a beer. It's one or the other. And I, that could lead to The reason to I ask that is, is the Nott County guys who do a podcast every single time they go live, <laughs> they, they talk about the hand dryers and buying new hand dryers. 
and if they get into the playoffs, we'll buy the hand dryers for the clubs every single time. They're talking about exactly the same thing. Every club seems to be so <laughs> missing out on good hand dryers. Short on clothes dryers in the UK, but big ups on the hand dryers. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Just, I don't, I don't want to dwell on Swansea City, but going quickly back to the point about Luke um, Williams. Um, yeah. Currently, there's three relegation spots in the Championship: so Huddersfield, Sheffield, Rotherham, um, and Swansea City currently sit in fifteenth, forty-seven points, um, sort of about uh, eight points above relegation. So, you know, he's he's secure. But now, um, at the you know going back to the National League. Dean Keats went up into League One uh, to Walsall, and there was another guy. Oh, I've forgotten his name now. Uh, uh, he was he was in the Rex in for the Wrexham job, and he went to a League One team, and he he just yeah didn't have a very good season at all, you know, because it was such a jump up. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, well, Sam Ricketts was another one who. Um, you know, Sam the Snake, he, he went up to League One to Shrewsbury Town. Um, didn't work out for him either. So, you know, to, for, for Luke Williams to go into the Championship and, you know, consolidate maybe, spend a season there. Uh, you know, fellow Welsh club, um, you know, wish the guy luck. He's, he's clearly got a lot of respect as a coach. And uh, But anyway, enough for Swansea. Let's get back to Wrexham. What we got here? To, so... to... I, I, I worry about voodoo bad mojo type stuff sometimes. Like I, I never mention clean sheet in because that's just bad luck, right? And there's certain things that I won't do. And one of them is I don't want to look up at the championship to see who's coming down. <laughs> I know that Rob yeah. has had a horrible year. And I also know like my wife's aunt lives there. So I'm like, if it's not Donnie and we're going to ditch Donnie and, 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 and skip him, at least I've got stuff to go and see over there. Um, wonderful beautiful Rotherham um, <laughs> but but I, I I I don't want to look at it I don't know we've been on this for an hour and 12 I mm -hmm. love it doing this I'm happy to stay for a little bit longer I'm just curious bringing it back to the match was there something other than the goals other than uh McLean's takeout of Hewitt early on and whether that was a yellow or a red but something else that you thought that was a defining moment um that may have been away from what we saw or maybe Baz that you saw that we didn't see on TV. I'll I'll, I'll throw I'll throw my well, well, I mean the reason for Baz is gone. That's all right. Was he was we're waiting, Sheldon? If you can just lift hmm. your other arm up over your head. Which one is yeah. on? Yeah, just put it behind your head. You know, oh, reminded me of Rose from Titanic here. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> what I want is I want that to go out for a bid on eBay and we'll see how much money somebody will pay. We'll donate it to the club. Sheldon, do it, do it. Do the draw. make sure you sign that. Oh, okay. If you've got a good set of man boobs, I will totally yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 if, and if anything else you've made my sister laugh uh and i'm surprised i don't even know where she is in the world right now somewhere in europe um so or it could be the middle east uh, oh I mean, dear so that uh, was well, awesome we haven't been on months. together around here have we no nah, i don't think we have man no nah, i mean I'm, i think i've missed you every time you've been on it's normally really late man for me it's 20 mm. past two in the morning so I actually do got to go to sleep because <laughs> these, these uh, well, I'm, I'm well and truly past it now. <laughs> we've got 417 in. I know that the kids are going to be back here relatively soon. I'm happy to leave it for five, 10 minutes. What I might do is I might put the link out there to send uh, last the last little shout out if somebody wants to log in and have a chat and say what's up. I, I did want to talk. Um, I don't know, Sheldon, did, did you... Mm -hmm. I've talked about Aikens. I've talked about the, the subs. I've t we've talked about. Let's talk about the referee and his jersey stuff, and whether you noticed the distinguish in the types of fouls he was calling. No, I'm going to leave this to you guys. I've got to go. <laughs> yeah, go to bed. We appreciate you much, love. Um, if you haven't, and you're depending on where you're watching, whether that be local uh, Daz Publishing or whatever else, go over to Two Beards Wrexham, give them a subscribe bump, uh, go to the podcast, you're on Spotify and wherever. Do all that sort of stuff. Rousey, you're an absolute beauty. Love having you. And I'm appreciate looking forward it. to my Got some big news with the podcast coming up too, so stay tuned. 
awesome. Good stuff. I love <laughs> hanging us out there. That's awesome. Brilliant. Cliffhanger. Let's go. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Rousey. See ya. Oh, we got mad. Well, Matt, I don't just throw the comments out and say whoop, whoop, in from the rain, two nothing game. Come in and sign in and have a chat with us. Um, that's for everybody. The link's there. Um, who was that? I, that's what I want to hear about is the, the people who were out there soaking it up and embracing. The weather was weird too light rain to sun to heavy rain. It was, oh, it was hard. Bad. Yeah, that was crazy. But it's Welsh weather. What can you do? They better get used to it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's that's the case. I don't know what what more like I'm I'm going through my list, and what's weird is that those are my notes from the game, mm. and I have like a whole lot of stuff to go through. But um, wait, none wait of it. We're a Premiership team, and they and we can't get players because it rains too much. <laughs> is it different? I I actually I thought that the precipitation was pretty close in Wales to where it is elsewhere in in in, in England. Uh, no, no maybe not <laughs> yeah, they're maybe right not. on the body of water i live i live in vancouver i mean rain is what we have all the time yeah or the entire year um davis and Cl oh interesting let's take that one on because that's one i don't agree with and i do like the com the stuff that hugh has in there is um Davis and Clueworth, and he put it in calf to all, calf to almost draw a fight. Needs a better chance to develop more in League One. Is he? Are, are you saying that they need to be playing in League One? Because I'm with you on Clueworth, but I don't think Davis comes along for the ride. And if you're saying they need to go out and not into League One to have a better chance to develop, um, then I, the inverse is true. And I'm I I say if Clueworth is ready for League One. He's he's shown yeah. at a young age that he can uh, that he's got the the skill set. Davis, do we local lad? No. Love him. I just don't think he's got the ponies. Sheldon, tell me I'm wrong. I saw you shaking. No, but no, no, I agree. Um, I I was worried about Clueworth too, but he has really come on towards the end of this season. Um, if he keeps up his play the way he has, I thought he played excellently today. Um, he deserves his his shot in the squad, um, at least up until January. Because if if it happens that he's out of his depth and can't um, and can't hack it straight away, because obviously it's going to be a big big jump. Maybe he can't develop fast enough. Um, but he, I think he deserves his shot. And come January, if he is not able to stay in the team or be, you know, a major part of the 22, then send him out on loan to a different team. Yeah, no, I, I can, I can see that being the case. I, I see, um, Dazzle's gone and I don't know where Baz is at, but I see Matt's joined in the chat. I don't know if he's going to join to say hi. Oh, and just as I on cue, the lights goes up. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready there, Baz. All right. Bring you back in. Um, Clueworth had those two shot blocks early on, one at the 26 minute mark, and that was the one that that was blocked and then went to, uh, and I'm going to get his name wrong, number three that came in, McLaughlin. Um, yeah. And then he had one prior to that. Both of them were, I don't think it was a defensive lapse. It was, it was, it was just the ball squirted out to a player in a threatening position who had basically a run in and a lane to be able to go and make a shot on the goal. And both instances, Clueworth got there. You add those two, with the pass that he gave to deliver to Cannon, that's why I made him the man of the match. And and I think he deserves League One. I think he's got, and he's young. That's the type of signing I want in the summer. I want a couple of those young guys who have a chance to build with the club and take their shots. And there's Maurice, and, and I get that. He hasn't had a chance, sort of like the Marriott situation, maybe hasn't had a chance. Yeah, but I think Mike... So, I think Mike Mike put a comment earlier up uh, about um, disappointing that um, O'Connell came on with five minutes to go. Granted, there was an extra five minutes extra time, but Parky wouldn't have envisaged that, I'm sure. Um, and also, um, yeah, George Evans, how good was it, was it to see him back in? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, hopefully he can get some uh, decent minutes in training. And Well, they're not going to have a lot of training, are they, really, this week because it was a Tuesday game. But... Uh, um, no, just great to see him back. I think he's back earlier than most people had expected. Yeah. Do we know how long Mendy's out? Um, well, I, I saw him. Um, he, he was in the, the family's enclosure, just in his casual gear. So, um, And obviously, he wasn't out um, 
training. So whether whether that means he's likely to be out for the rest of the season with only six games left over the next couple of weeks, um, I don't know. But the good the good thing is, I mean, I I, cu- I couldn't really watch the uh, Grimsby game because uh, we we were travelling away, and um, oh, no, in fact, I had a, a gig that I was doing and. Um, for charity night and um the Grimsby game, McFadden got a run in. So um I guess he's he's Parky's plan B down yeah. down the left side if um if <laughs> if McLean should happen to get a load of yellow yeah, cards just, in the next few games. I swear if, if if he ends up with another five yellow cards and goes out for is it three match ban? It'd be three match ban. That would be bad, yeah. wouldn't it? But, um, Man, you better get better. That's the part of the reason I asked. Here's the question from Aaron because I I don't think you can touch our back line, but now hopefully we've got Toc back. We've got Evans. You've got Young who missed out today. Yeah. You've got Lee and Cannon. You've got pick three. Um, and I'm really struggling because I don't think you could take Boyle out and swap and put Toc back in that spot. I mean, in a pinch, and if 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 you wanted to late in the game, depending on the strategy, I can see it. But for your starting lineup, pick your three midfielders now. Assuming that Evans and Toc are fully healthy, I think I think it was a good good tactical decision today to take Elliot Lee off. He'd put a shift in, um, and obviously George George Evans being a more defensive minded midfielder, I think that was really good. You know, two 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 goals up, just see it out. No no room for complacency in them last sort of ten minutes. Um, so, so that was good, and I think Mullen put a real shift in. Um, Marriott did make a, a good burst in on their keeper. Um, what's his name? Pim? Uh, Pim. Christy Pim, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, he had a right good go. Uh, the ball went back to the keeper, and, and Marriott sort of chased it down, put a bit of a sliding tackle. Uh, another day, he might have got it. I think everyone wants him to score. Um, because I think he he's going to be a real force next season. I hope, at least. Um, but yeah, I was just looking anyway. So Paul Mullin now is up to tenth place. So he was he was joint with Andy Morell up until recently on ninety six. He's now on ninety nine goals, which is absolutely yeah. outstanding. Um, in the short time he's been with us. Um, so the next target on on the back is Albert Kinsey, who's got hundred goals. And Tommy Bannon, Ron Hewitt, all play as well before my time. Gary Psycho Bennett, he's um, he's in sixth place on 114. So mm. Graham Whittle, Carl Connolly, a lot of people would have heard them. So he's only sort of 20, 20 odd goals behind them. You can see it happening quite easy. Soon be in the top three, I'm sure, by the middle of next season. I'm going to go back to that question about the, the back three here and just give, as, as you were chatting, I was contemplating if I had to make a decision. Um, I don't think you can leave George Evans, assuming he's 100% healthy out of this squad. He's before the injury, he was referred to by many as um, the best, the the player of the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think you, you can't touch the back three now that Boyle's asserted himself and TOC is there. So to, in in any lineup in that back, in that mid three, George Evans is my first pencil in onto the box. And I know somebody said George Evans is too slow. He just he provides too much control in the midfield for me to be able to leave him off. Yeah. But after that, this is now where I struggle because you've got Toc who's quicker than proving to be quicker than I thought. And I don't know where the speeds come from or whether mm-hmm. I was just blind. Um, and I think Josh identified that earlier. Is you've got Toc. Evans, uh, or sorry, TOC, Lee, and Cannon, and you can only choose two of them. Well, the only other thing would be to, to you know, does does Boyle get dropped to the bench maybe and put Tom O'Connor left back, which, uh, or, you know, left left centre back. But they've been so um, solid. Why would you disrupt it? Yeah. Why would you disrupt yeah. it? He doesn't deserve to be dropped because he, you know, he had a lot of no. critics, 100%. myself included. But it's also nerdy that if it goes south, you're like, why in the hell did I do that when we had such yeah. a good thing going? And, you know, this is where we need somebody like Matt and maybe over the weekend talk about, like, to me, yes, you, you, you've you got specialists that play in certain areas, but like with McFadden on the left side with McLean, if you're looking to do a spell, is there somebody who can play that left wing back and has the the, the lung capacity to run that wing and, mm-hmm. and, and do the crosses and be defensive along that left side? And maybe, maybe that's the substitute for McFadden. I don't know. Um, 
but it's it, it's an interesting discussion. Um, I feel like I need to wrap this up at a minute uh, at an hour thirty. I've, we've had a good run. It's been a beautiful day. Um, but I've I've got things that I've got to go and do, and and, and I don't want to. I'd rather sit and talk Wrexham until uh, the sun sets on what was an yeah. awesome good Friday. The only thing I would say positive about today that we haven't maybe mentioned is we were playing some ridiculously difficult passes um, around the pitch today. Long passes between multiple players, um, skipping through the midfield, but not going high. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they were getting there. Yes. Uh, okay, so, some went wrong, some didn't make it, or a defender got a foot on it, or a midfield, whatever. But they are the sort of passes we should be playing every single day. The only reason we missed some of these passes is because it was Mansfield. If you do these passes to the weaker teams in this league, we should be knocking in four goals, you know, against some of these weaker teams. If we played like we did today against the bottom of the league, occasionally someone's going to beat us. We know that in this league, but we will be knocking down those teams much, much easier if we played the sort of balls we played today. It was it was yeah, it was brilliant and in, in, in the possession, you're right. They were making those plays. It wasn't in our passing that was causing them to disrupt the possession. It was on the nicking the ball coming back with their pressure. I As they, well, they yes. nicked, yeah. how many times did they pick our pockets with the ball? Eight mm. to ten times, which I is rare to uh, I don't think we've seen that um this season at all. So but the passing was brilliant. Um you're you're bang on with that. Uh, Baz, well, how often couple, do you see Sorry, how, ahead, how often do you see four of our players surrounding the, bo- the ball carrier and saying, give us the ball? One of yeah, us is yeah. going to take it. You know, we're where, where are you going? High up the pitch, yeah. Yeah, and we maybe, never do that. It, the, the, maybe it's oh, because yeah. of Cannon's pass and, and our goal in the last match that everybody wants to get that beautiful build-up where you've got the passing all the way through, so then they decide <laughs> to do it uh, kind of today again yeah. with Kluwer with the really yeah. brilliant ball through past McLaughlin, Cannon over, score it up. It's not, not as nice, but it's it's it, maybe there's magic in uh, running for a highlight goal. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thing of beauty. That I, haven't, I still haven't seen the highlights from that game, but yeah, Cannon's goal. Yeah. And again, coming back to your point, Sheldon about um, O'Connor's pace, you know, Mullen playing deep, wins the ball back, feeds it out to O'Connor, and then like he bursts down that channel, and uh, j- just the precision and and the technique and the quality to put it just in front enough for yeah. Cannon. You, you can just see him take that little leap forward onto his left foot, so he can just lash it across the keeper with his right. I, I I've watched that goal so many times in the last couple of days. It was beautiful. There's a video on TikTok posted. It's the official Wrexham AFC website of that cannon goal where they split the screen and they have one that's following the ball and one that's following cannon with the streak. Because that what I remember of the goal wasn't the point for the pass, which was brilliant. It wasn't the strike was what that was brilliant. It wasn't the even the you know it wasn't the pass that was that, that was brilliant. To me, it was cannon deciding, and you could see the light switch go on that said, "I'm going on my horse," and he started streaking, and they used that. TikTok sound that goes, I'm fast as boy, but the but the part the, the first part of it, if, if you know what I'm talking about, it was it's the perfect video to watch that goal. Um, and I've ch- chuckled about that because that's my memory is just watching Cannon put on the absolute burners and go screaming through the middle of the pitch to get that that pass. Hey, go, I'll, um, I'll 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 just put a crazy scoop out there now saying Toza Young, Davis, Hayden, Howard all leaving end of the season. Um Toza is gonna struggle to get back in that team now, isn't he? <laughs> that would um yeah, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we did see him to maybe as uh, to rest one of the other key players during one of the upcoming games. Um, if Don't I was to pick it. one, I'd think would it, would it be Doncaster or Crawley? But again, Crawley Don't have do it. taken some big scalps of me. You know what I mean? Don't wait. Is this is, is this true? Their mugs are all on sale. No others. <laughs> I hope that that would be true. That would be the scoop of all scoops, Matt. Al. <laughs> Please tell me he's joking. Did did Bolton do enough to stay in the team? Uh, yeah. Barnett made a good effort when he when he came on. He, he, he was fully fired up, and I think he was he was fighting yeah. for his place. Certainly, when he came back on, appreciating it was for about seventy one minutes. So yeah, he had a good mm. 20, 25 minutes. Um, and, and by that point, obviously, Bolton started getting battered around a bit. And obviously, he, t- he took the, the knock, which won the penalty. Yeah. Um, 
But um, no, it's good good that he's he's had some time. I, for me, there was a spell. I can't remember the actual incident, but um, he he lost he lost the tackle, which came very dangerously close to them scoring. Um, and that for me was where I was thinking that Barnett's better defensively. And we've always said that you know whilst Bolton's probably got more pace and a faster player going yeah. forwards. Um, Defensively, he's not as strong. Maybe I mean, obviously, Ford's our best mm. right wing back by by a shadow, but um, Barnett's better sort of attacking, um, and and both bring different sort of distribution, don't they, with the diagonal balls? But um, yeah, for me, Bolton, I, I don't know. Be interesting to see who does start in that position. Barnett might have just edged it a little bit tonight, and if he's fully fit, get back into the squad. With I, really wish, I really wish Bolton would have continued his run and taken a shot. Yes, he, uh, he that run instead of passing. I really do. If he had scored there after after taking that run, that would have been amazing. Confidence. And and the pass wasn't a, a fantastic pass available to him either. You know, it's it's almost like, oh Jesus, mm. I'm I'm there now. I need to pass this off. That's my job. Get up there and pass it to someone else. You know? there, there was a missed time clearance as well from Mansfield, um, deep deep in their half, um, and he got picked up by Elliot Lee, uh, put out wide, saw Connell, who put it back in for McLean, but it kind of bobbled, and McLean couldn't get a, a clear strike on it. And I think also then, in, in the second half, Fletcher had the opportunity to shoot, but sort of passed it backwards for Mullin, who he couldn't quite get it out of his feet. So um, yeah, two really good um, occasions where Wrexham on another day, might have just if the ball fell right, and we have seen that in a few games recently, where that final ball into a player just hasn't fallen right. Which you know, on another day, you can just get your goal difference up a little bit. But um, I got, but I we, got, we're catching I, them up. We're I catching got Hugh up in the too. background here, who's got a couple of points to make, and we're going to add him. Then we'll probably look to wrap things up unless okay, anybody so, else. Uh, another in. half an hour. Then. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't have fun. I, I want to be here. I just have I'm other things. Noah. I'm a Noah. Uh, I, I so like you, stories. Grab you. Matt Al, I just wanted to, to, to chuckle and say what we need to do is get a security camera on the mug section in the in the store to find out what mugs are on sale um, to know what's happening with player decisions. Hugh, let's grab you, bring you in. How are you, sir? How was that for you? What's, what you got for points for us? Very pleasing, very, very pleasing indeed. A very good performance. We were lucky with decisions, it mm. seems. But when have we said that before this season? Not many times, I don't think. Usually we're thinking, oh, we should have had a penalty there. We should have had, uh, why would they? And even in this game, why were people grabbing all the Mullins shirts and, uh, and uh, Palmer's shirts and, you know, all that, nothing given and all that. So I think it's probably a, even up time, I've, I've said in the chat. But anyway, it's very pleasing. Everybody's around the world. Wrexham fans are happy tonight. Uh, very good. And uh, the predictions we had last night were about right. I don't want to go on too long. I, you're already, you're already getting. <laughs> we had a bit of a laugh. We had a bit of a laugh last night. I hope Sheldon uh, uh, is okay. What I said, but I was just, I was just probing a bit. You know, so I. I think he's a definitely a Wrexham supporter. And I just, uh, but I mean, I just it was a it was a bit of a tongue in cheek. It, it, it's okay that, that, uh, job that, that, that was a show. fine joke. At least you didn't. But anyway, what I, what I what I why I've come on is is you were talking about buying more. Play, oh, I'm, you know, I think it looks like we're going to get promotion. Okay. Uh, yeah. It hasn't quite been certified yet, but it, it looks quite likely, very yeah. likely. But. Uh, Next, I don't think we're going to go up to the championship next season. I really don't. Probably not. And I just want to stay in League One. I don't think so. We we might be mid, we might be upper mid table, yeah. we might get in the playoffs or something like that. Who knows? It's hard, hard to, to say. say yeah. It's hard to say. But we we played we played a few teams, you know, in league. We played Shrewsbury. Okay. We were very lucky to win that one. They 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 you know they played well against us, and they to be honest. Their shooting was so abominable, they, you know. They, they, but their their play yeah. was good, and then we went to Blackburn, and they, you know, we had a, we scored the first goal, but they totally outplayed us after. You know, so 
I know, yeah, we need we need better players for to go up higher. But you know, if we we've already started to create a bit of debt there, we've noticed it. Yeah, it's nothing to worry about because the club is going forward, and we spent a lot to get out of the national league, which is very very difficult. But I think we need, you know, if you look at championship teams, there's been a lot of reports on this. When you get into the championship, you need to need to have, probably need to have a a pretty a pretty you be need to be in the black then because more, many many of the championship teams are running at a loss yeah. in the championship because everybody's competing to get in the Premiership and they're spending mm. so much on players there. We need to start getting our training ground sorted. I'm not saying we haven't got a place to train. We have. We need to start developing the youngsters. And I think it's a very good chance for a development uh, or a consolidation. It only it only may, it might be only one, one season. I mean, yeah, Davis hasn't performed well this season, but he has got a, probably the best shot in the, in the team. He just needs some time to, 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 and other players are getting a bit older, you know. I mean, Ollie Palmer, he, he, I'm not sure whether he'll be able to muster it in League One, you know, especially the back end of the season. And all the players again, I mean, and, and Davis, uh, he's, he's in prime, prime age now, you know, he needs to develop. I remember Andy Morrell. Andy Morrell played under Brian Flynn, he was a good player, he scored eight. In one game against a lower team, admittedly, but he scored eight and an eight nil win, or seven and an eight nil win. But apart from that, he wasn't he wasn't being put in much. He doesn't doing well. Apart from that, the next season a different manager came in, and he scored 30, 30 plus goals. And because Wrexham were always being poor, we 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 sold him to Coventry. But things can change. Players need time in there yeah. to develop and you know get their game going. So and they can't do it if they're just coming on for ten minutes all the time. So is is your and point Davis we need is, to be is, careful is, with our money next year Davis. and not go crazy? We do, we do, we, we do. We need to get more <laughs> players, and you bring some more youngsters through, and just stick them in slowly and give them you know half a game and. See if we can get a few in there to play in the league, league one. Um, Let's, can I play, can I play devil's advocate just with, with you for a right? second, Hugh? I'll just just jump in to, to say, I, I mean, I don't, I agree with you. I would rather see a sustainable model of development that goes forward. I'd like to see the academy be bought and all those sorts of things, get some young players and build for the future. You're also, sep- you've, you've got the documentary that's in a separate Delaware owned company as an asset, and we don't know what it's making. We've heard 433,000, 300,000 to 433,000 quid per episode, which would be ridiculous if that was the number. But if you are the ownership group and you have Peter making a ton of cash and it has an asset that's driven on the quality of the team and the stories and the narrative that it tells, and you need that for the marketing purposes. And then on the other side, you've got your football team that, you know, is, is the normal process would be to be patient and to build the sustainability. But if you're getting paid in one hand and are you willing to take some heavy losses to spend that money to really drive the bus forward and maintain and secure eyes? Because if you do move up, you can't get into the Premier League until you end up with your academies because they don't let you up there. You get like a uh, it's expensive because you get like a uh, there's an obligation within three years or two years or whatever it is. Um, But. Uh, push push that aside and i don't think that that's the goal but to the championship maybe they may take a, a real run at this to get within spitting distance thinking that they can maintain the narrative with the documentary to suck in more people knowing that it that rexham's now 25 percent of the money is from outside of uh, outside of wales in the uk right um do you think that's possible um I, I see, I see the point, but sorry, um, football is about the football team. What goes on the pitch? The documentary is about what the story is on the pitch. It's not the other yep. way around. You don't create fiction and then, and then try and then use that to, to you know, to to, to 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 keep the club in the right position after. I mean, it's it's, it's nonsensical. It's it's not. We're not. 
we, the documentary is great. A lot of people be brought yeah. in. You know, it, it, I don't say I'm not saying stop the, the thing, but you know, it's <laughs> the documentary is about the club, not the club being about the documentary. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not a Holly. We look. A lot of people call us the Hollywood yeah. team, or the you know the. I. I we cannot allow that okay. to happen in I, reality. I, I, I agree it's, with it's you. End up yeah. The championship, going to the championship with debt already, needing to spend even more to go up again in the, in the Premiership. You know. Okay. There's a lot of teams are in real serious bother in the championship because there's such a demand to get out of there, and uh, we but we we can't. But you know, even Arsenal, Man United, all these teams they. They've got a cat. They've got academies. They train. They bring in players through. Okay. Yes. They're not buying okay. everything. That, that's a very valid we point. We could never that, do that. I mean, you hold, you hold on, Sheldon. Let Sheldon go. Sheldon can okay. do that. Well, we can't. Yeah. No yeah. way. Okay. Now that that's a very valid point. I, I I'll give you there. Okay. We don't have a ca uh, a good academy. First of all, but besides that, we're not buying young players. They haven't gone out yet to try and buy in young talent that can stay with us for multiple years or could progress in their development and then get bought for a higher value and make money for the club that is something we are certainly lacking but yeah. i do believe you're you're yeah. you're slightly according to the numbers we're hearing if they're true um i think you're you're slightly over or, or underestimating the money um that the club does have so what they've been doing is basically saying okay next season so this season at the moment we're going to earn 20 million um so they've spent it a year early this is what they're doing right now they're spending all the money that they know they're going to get in revenues next year this year to build the team and they're likely going to do the same thing again at the start of league one now the difference is in league one we don't expect to go up in the first year so then we're going to sit and consolidate with our good team but not a great team and then we get another 20 million plus whatever we have grown in that next year. And then we're going to buy more players and become a better team. And then we're shooting for getting out of the league. One of the worst things I think could happen to us um, next year is let's say we do put money in, get a good team, make it into the playoffs and then win the playoffs. If we go up into the championship with a team like that, then we haven't consolidated our team. We don't necessarily have the money for championship and they're either going to have to go into massive debt or we're going to get kicked out of the championship in one year. So I don't think going up next year is a good yeah, idea, well, but I do think the money's yeah, coming yeah, in, John, yeah. because if we, if the simple fact is at the moment, if we stop spending, if we stop pushing heavily and just say, okay, buy some players, we're happy to consolidate. We have money. We have money then. The club is sustainable if we stop pushing. So that's where I would, I'm would. i not worried. Because if I the show we, goes yeah, away, we, need we can slow do that. The yeah, <clears throat> I, think you're right. I think we're on the same mm. sheet. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. The shelves. We just slow the development down a bit, you know. Yeah, I mean, Luton took 10, or 10 years or 9 years, whatever. If we do it in five, that'll be brilliant. Or oh, six, no, that'll be brilliant. You know, <laughs> we don't need to do it in four. Yeah, no, I, I'm looking for a ten-year plan, but I, I, I can see the wall that's still opening up for reasons that, in most circumstances, you'd scratch your head just because there's impacts and and potential. And, and I say that because of, um, well, the wage rate that that's already been out there, and and that they've been securing the capital. I, I'm, I'm getting to like the numbers more. I'm gonna have to wrap wrap, wrap this up, um, Hugh. I'm super appreciative of you for joining us again. As always, it's always nice to have. Uh, the ramble with you and 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 the insight that you brought as far as uh, the the future as it is financially. So I appreciate it. And thank you for that, you. Yeah, well, thanks for bringing me on. Uh, we, I mean, it was, I, I can ramble I a little it. bit. We did last it. night, but I, I, I've got some see it. But I, I think, you know, and also we can build, and also we haven't got this big, we haven't got a full, even with our plans, our present plans, we haven't got that cop stand done yet. When that's built, 
there'll be more revenue brought in. It's, it's very and little we revenue. Can, we can John. balance the book in that way as well. John, um, yes, it, it's good to get that stand up, but what that stand is actually worth is very little, um, and it's worth the money in the long term. It's what yeah. makes the club That's sustainable it. when we stop spending. Like you're saying, yeah. in that case, yes, but for the immediate future, with the growth of the company, that stand means very, very little um, to, to the growth because you're, all you're doing is adding yeah, on a couple of thousand. In, it? Oh, no, it, it does need to go in for the future of the company, of the, the team. So, yes, absolutely, yeah, we well, want this. I mean, um, so I'm going to... I'm, I'm gonna. I have to go. So I. I okay. That's the only thing. So yeah, okay, I, okay, I can. I can sit here for three, four hours and just chat. Rack. Yeah, I was Love you, just Hugh, and I, and I want to give Baz the opportunity to chat. Hugh, I'm gonna to, to let you go and set that up. A nice little point there from Christopher that says they're gonna have to spend a lot in League One. No doubt. Um, but they also have the turnover to do it. So it's that's, that's not gonna be an issue. Um, and so Baz, I don't know if you have any final thoughts before you wrap up or anything that's coming up on the channel um that you want to share just, talk about anything in life general thought hit us with whatever magic you got this time last year went to halifax uh a disappointment well it was a, it was absolutely amazing day out apart from the football obviously um where we lost <laughs> but um but that proved to be a, a key fundamental turning point in wrexham season and we were talking about the other day that you know had wrexham not beat uh, halifax away um, or, or if we hadn't have lost to them, um, would we have been fired up for the Notts County game that followed on Easter Monday? Now, we've done the first part. We, we've, um, yeah. in a slightly different context, we've beaten Mansfield. The big one now is going to come down to, well, Crew obviously dropping off the pay, pace with uh, a draw away at Gillingham today. And I just think that the, the run in with six games remaining, starting at Doncaster Tuesday. And I, somebody asked me at the game, are you, are you going Tuesday? And I'm like, I'm really, really tempted. The only problem is I've just come back off holiday in Yorkshire, which would have been an hour and a half drive down there. So um, next week would have been perfect. Um, so glad I made the four hour trek this morning, leaving at 10 through every single sodding traffic jam on the way. Um, <laughs> but we got there with 45 minutes to spare. Um, right. Not disappointed with the results. Um, really happy that we took the three points. And um, yeah, you know, Red Horde again. Sean, thanks ever so much for hosting. Um, local pundits, obviously. Uh, I guess Josh was on earlier before I got the chance to join, and Sheldon and Ivan also joining in today. I think it's been uh, a great run in so far, and I, I hopefully the cylinders are going to start really firing up now. We've got George Evans back from injury. We don't know about Mendy. Um, but yeah, what an exciting run in now. And, and for me, I'm glad that on my 38, 30, 28 to 30 points prediction before Forest Green Rovers, I'm back on par. And I did predict three points against Doncaster, Colchester, Crawley, Forest Green, a draw against Crewe and a win at home nonetheless. Final game of the season, Stockport at home. So um, we've done Mansfield today. I'm confident we can do Stockport, but we've got a, a big job to do in between. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe to the local pundit, Red Horde. Two Beards, Racecourse Ramble, um, Welsh Beast Sports, and of course, Dazzle Publishing. Thanks for the support. It's uh, Happy Easter, everyone, if, if that's your thing, as John rightly said, because it's I, for I, everyone I, Easter. I, I appreciate that. Sheldon, do you have anything that you wanted to get off before we sign off, and then I'll just do a quick little wrap? No, I just can't wait to see my, um, my little pencil drawing from Rousey. No doubt. <laughs> I, I wonder if we can eBay that or put something out there and make 20 quid and donate it to charity. Somebody's going to want to buy that thing. With a, with a free tools uh, and Jordan Davis cup. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> there, there you go. Discounted. Well, um, if, if someone wants to donate a significant amount of money, I will allow Rousey to draw me nude. Um, hey! If, if it's, if it's <laughs> a significant amount of money. That. One hour, 49 minutes into this one. We'll, we'll circle that one. Done. Um, on that note, um, uh, Monday, I'm still hoping to have, and I think Sheldon, you may, I'm probably gonna have to chat, join the discord. I really want to set oh, up yeah. to have somebody watching each of the four games on Monday, um, so that yeah. people can watch what they want, but we can all follow along. I just, I think that that works, do it through restream, something like this. I'll change the format and we'll just have, uh, we won't be able to use the chat as much because I'd like to get rid of it just to keep our names there on the scores and just have the chat, um, running. So we'll see <clears throat> what we can do there. Um, 
I'm going to be putting working on a bunch of the graphics, the, the running graphic that I do, the stuff about the automatic promotions and all those sorts of stuff. The watch party, local po local pundit will have that on Tuesday. We're going to have it on Tuesday. Uh, the game and Donnie that I really wanted to go to, it's like literally a seven-minute walk away from the in-laws' house. Um, uh, yeah, bothers me. Anyway, um, we'll make it work. I'm And if you haven't followed me on Twitter, um, I will throw that out there. I, I, I am put, going to be putting some of those graphics out there and some of the stats. Some of the interesting stuff that we haven't talked about, just so you know, on the go forward before we jump off, our projected maximum at the moment is at 84 points. Um, and so that's based on a 1.83 points per game. Everybody below us um, is, is kind of around that as far as their maximum, except for Barrow. As an example, MK Dons, their maximum if they win out is 85 points. Crew's maximum if they win out is 84 points. And so we can still play in at, at, at that 1.83. Mm. Do I want to? No. Smash this. Go for the title and do it all. Um, yeah. But we set ourselves up to really make a run here uh, on a really good, good, good Friday, um, and let's make it even a better Tuesday. Uh, so yeah, let's I, so uh, I we take another. We, sorry, Sheldon, go on. No, go on, go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say, obviously, there's 91 points available if we win all the games. It's not going to happen. But no, um, yeah. for me, the only the only game I've predicted we're going to drop points and I'll be crew away. And I'm bloody gutted because I, I tried my best to, to get tickets for that one. And it was just f ferociously difficult in the queue at 10 o'clock. Even went to the club shop in the afternoon and about five people in front of me, they pulled the shutters down. So, uh, yeah, gutted. But I'm sure, I'm sure it's not the dream's not over yet. So I might be able to wangle one. If anyone's got any crew tickets for me, send them over to send them over. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, I'm I'm start, I'm starting to think that um, crew is not going to be a relevant match to us okay. in regards top if three. We, if we get twelve I, points I, out of the next four, it should be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if we if we take out those three points on Tuesday, we are going to be in great position for the top three mm -hmm. uh, without without too much stress. I'm with you. Yeah. All right. We're going to be around doing our things. Thank you. 440 for across all of the streams, by the way. So that number keeps Perfect. going up by like a hundred almost or well, I guess 50 ish. Uh, I think that's a hundred more than last week. Um, so things are going well there. We love having you got to get some of those people a little bit more confident, but thanks to Allison for, for Ivan and for Pat, uh, the people who we don't normally hear from. Um, and then much love always, Josh, Sheldon, Baz, uh, Matt joined in for a little bit to chat. We know everybody's got lives and opportunities and take care of their stuff. For the regulars, um, Ruby, I saw somebody on my YouTube channel flooded the screen with a whole bunch of um, memberships that they bought for people. So I appreciate yeah. that. Um, and thank you for doing that and, and throwing the support out. And I want to make sure that I'm going to have to track out who that was because it all happened so fast. It was a bunch of, 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 of a mess. <laughs> Um, it's it's a different format when you're restreaming on everybody's stuff, but um, mass mass appreciation. Join, hit the subscribe button, um, as Baz said, or as Baz said, um, to everybody, and much love. We'll see you hopefully Monday for another watch party, a neutral watch party with all four games, and Tuesday. For, yeah, let me know. Uh, let me know what match you want me to watch or whatever, and I can get it. Or you pick it. Let's. Uh, I'll jump on Discord. Oh, I don't can care. Send, yeah. Can you send me the link? Um, and uh, for your Discord when we get off, and then I'll. Oh, for our Discord. In. Yeah, yeah, I'll email it straight over to you. Yeah, yeah email it straight over to me. I'm going to jump onto that today and, and have the chat figure out. And we'll, oh, yeah. we'll make this okay. work. Even if I have to watch four games and I got my kids' iPads running it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. Have a good one, all. Um, enjoy yeah. your Easter, and we'll see you uh, Monday and Tuesday. Take care. Bye. Okay.